Hi, this is Pastor Josh, and I just want to thank you for watching or listening to these teachings. Our hope is that through these teachings that you would learn more about God and grow closer to Him in relationship. But we also hope that these would be an additional teaching to what you already receive in your church home. If you don't have a church home, we would love to have you here at Cornerstone. So we do pray that through these teachings that you would hear God through the proclamation of His Word. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. You be seated. All right, so what we have here is Paul the Apostle writing to the church in Rome, and he ends this, not that he had chapters, but he ends this section here with this great praise, with this great song, and it's really questions. 33. How unsearchable are his judgments? Listen to that. How inscrutable are his ways? In other words, can you search out his judgments? Can you look at his ways? Then he goes into more questions, 34. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Any of you? Any of you? Put your name in there. Josh, have you known the mind of the Lord? Next question. Josh, have you been God's counselor? Whoever you are, put your name there. Who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? So here is, if you want to fall asleep the rest of the service, the rest of our gathering, that's, that's, that's between you and God. And so I'll just give you what this is in a, in a nutshell. This is what this says here, is that we as humanity, and really we as all of creation, are incapable of, of knowing the deep things of God. That's it. We are incapable, it is impossible for us to understand the depth of who God is. Now that runs um, straight in the face against what our world says, what our society says. Our society doesn't say that. Our society says opposite of that. Our society and our culture and our world says, no, that's not right. First of all, God's dead. He's not real. So we've already put ourselves higher than God. God's not real. We are telling God what is the truth. He says, who, who in verse 34, who's been his counselor? And that's what the world does. And maybe that's you. I don't know if that's you or not. But we look at it and we say, no, God's not real. But if he is real, I got a thing to tell him. I have to teach him something because he's evil. The things that he allows and and does in our world is evil. So I need to teach him something. As if we could teach God anything. It's contrary. This passage is contrary to our culture. We as humans, we have, uh, uh, God has given us reason to be able to, to think and to come to conclusions But we have flawed reason because of the fall, because we've sinned, because we've separated ourselves from God. We have flawed reason now. And a good example, I'll give you a good example of this, of flawed reason of humanity. Uh, Doctors used to have this uh, procedure called bloodletting, which basically poke you or put a needle in you and a tube or something, and they would let your blood out. They would pour your blood out just they would get rid of it. And, and the reason they would do that is their mind and their, their thinking and the latest science was that this is how you get rid of whatever disease you're in or, or whatever you're struggling with or whatever pains you have. It's by plugging you out. You got too much blood or whatever reason. So we're going to spill the blood. Well, as time progressed, doctors began to study more and they said, well, now there's viruses and there's bacterias, and there's other things that, that go against the body. So bloodletting, that was really foolish of those doctors back in the day. Don't do the bloodletting. This is now the latest science. This is the latest truth. Well, even with the partial truth of some of these things, it's still flawed reason. I mean, for example, today, what has been told to us the last, I don't know, year and a half, or year, I don't First of all, 
no, you don't need to wear a mask, it's okay. Now, no, you need to wear a mask. That's the best procedure. Well, I lied about that. And no, I didn't lie about this. I just was doing what was best. Well, actually, two masks are the best thing now. Well, make up y'all's mind. And what you're seeing is the flawed reason of humanity. The sciences, astronomy, if you go and search, if I watch weird documentaries, so I watch these things. But you, you see these astronomers, people who study the sky and the cosmology and all these sorts of things. They disagree with themselves about a black hole and what this does and what that does. And over time, they change their mind. Remember, years ago, people used to think that it was the sun that moved. Now today, people think it's and believe it's the earth that moves. Well, what is it? And what I'm pointing out to you is this, the flawed reason of humanity. If you give us 10 years, 50 years, 500 years, what is true today will likely not be true then. And the way you test that is you look at history and we find out, yeah, that has changed over time. We have a flawed reason of humanity. And because of that, when we hear these things of the, oh, oh how unsearchable is God? Oh, you can't know the depths of God. We say, yes, we can. We know these things. God's not real. If he is, we have something to tell him. But the reality is this. I won't turn there, but you can read Romans 1 and chapter 2 later in your own time. And, and it says that God gave them over to their own minds, that they would deceive themselves. They didn't want God. That was the root issue. They don't want God. Just so you know, that is our status since the fall, since our great ancestors have, uh, have fallen against God, is now we grow up not wanting Him, making excuses everywhere we can. Coming up with this flawed reason. Oh, this is the truth. This is the truth. So we also have an enemy. Okay, the enemy. The devil. Everybody likes to say the devil made me do it. Well, he is a real entity, a spiritual being who did sin against God and hates God and doesn't want God. So if you are for God, he does not want you. But the fact that you don't even have to be for God and He doesn't want you. He wants you to fail in life. You don't even have to believe in God and the devil still wants you to fail. You know why? Because you are His creation. And He does not like anything that is of God. So you don't get out of it just because you don't love God. You're stuck in it. The devil is after you. And the scripture says that He's come to blind the mind of us. So we, come, we have our own flaws in our reason, and then we have an enemy who's coming to deceive us and doing all these things, and he's good at it because he's been doing it for thousands of years, everyone. So we have these two things against us. There's this big hurdle in front of us, that we, this big obstacle, and we have to get over this obstacle in order to know who God is. We have to get over our own flawed reason, Get out of that. Don't think that you are smart enough. You're, you're, you're wise, that you're all knowledgeable to tell God anything. And you have to get over the fact that there is a liar out there, the deceiver. And you have to be able to uh, di distinguish and extinguish what those are. So turn away from the word of the devil. Turn away from the word of humanity and turn to the word of God. And this is what the word of the Lord says. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. How inscrutable his ways. He has, who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? Who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things to him. Be glory forever. Amen. That's what the word of the Lord says. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones helps us out here. He was a 20th century pastor, one of the great pastors of the 1900s. He says this, <clears throat> But man, he is limited. Even at our best, we are small. How little we know. And the more that is being discovered, the more it reveals to us our ignorance of how little we know. Man at his best can never reach it. Speaking of God's truth, God's uh, depth. He can never arrive at it. He can't possibly 
understand it. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, the reason he's a doctor is not because he was a theology a PhD the doctor. He was a literal doctor. And he was the top, one of the top doctors in, in London, I believe, at that time. The early 1900s. A, a, a great, great doctor be, got saved and left uh, the medical field and moved into preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. And he himself says, you know, I know the latest science. I know the smartest guys, and it's foolishness. We must turn to the Word of God. Here's the truth. We are created. Everyone say created with me. Created. That's what the Word of the Lord says in Genesis. God created us. Now, as creatures, that means we have limits. Okay? We have limits. Our mind has limits. But God is eternal. He was never created. He is all-powerful. I mean, look at these things. Creator, He is all-powerful. He's always in control. That's the sovereign. He is omnipotent. That's the all-powerful. Omnipresent. He is in all places at all times. He knows what is happening everywhere. There is nothing. This is God. He is eternal. We are finite creatures. Limited. Y'all say that with me. Limited. A creature is limited. God is limitless. And that's why Paul says here, you think you can search out the, the truth of God and know him fully? You got to be kidding me. What grade are you in? Kindergarten? Are you that foolish? Now, if you don't believe Romans 11, let me just read some of these scriptures to us and they'll be on the screen for us. Mr. Jennifer, you'll walk us through that. So Psalm, I'll just read them up there. Psalm 145, verse 3 says this. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. Watch this. His greatness is what? Unsearchable. Hmm. Psalm 147, verse 5. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Leave it right there. Beyond measure. There's no ruler there's no tape measure. There's nothing in our own selves that could measure out the greatness of who God is. He is beyond measurement. We cannot comprehend him. We cannot fully see who he is. Now, these two psalms are they're, they're praise songs. So imagine Israel coming together or us coming together. And this is how we would start out our gathering. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Let's worship him. The next verse says this, Psalm 139, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Now, what he's referring to here is when he says, um, uh, Lord, you know my past before I go down. He basically says, you know every hair on my head. You know all things. And then he, he, he concludes it here. Such knowledge is too wonderful. It, it is more than me. I am limited, and this is greater than, than what I can comprehend. It's too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. I cannot grasp it. So you're not alone, everyone. The scriptures testify over and over again that our God, we cannot wrap our arms around him. We cannot put him in our little box. I wish I had a box up here. I have a box up here. Thank you, Jesus. You can't put him in your box. So, you read the scripture. Oh, I love, God is love. So you grab it and you put it in here in your box. God is so kind. You see what he did? You put him in your box. And then the problem that we do is we read something that we don't like and we say, uh-uh, not in my box, God. You don't fit, you don't fit in here. That does not fit in here. And I don't like that. So this is my God. But if your God is not the God of the Bible, you're worshiping a false God. And the problem that we have is we try to put them in a box in the first place. Now there's some 
general kind of parameters that we can know he is eternal, those sorts of things. But you got to leave. Here's the thing. If you want to stop feeling pain when you come to the Bible because you don't like some, certain things that God says, you have to leave your box open and live life this way. Because sometimes we do think God is so loving in this area, but he's also just. And, and, and we're thinking, What? That doesn't make sense. And he says, yeah, because that part of me is not me. You are worshiping something else. So get that out of your box and throw it away. So we have to worship the God of the Bible, not the God of our what? Box. Go to the next verse. Isaiah 40. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. His understanding is unsearchable. One more. Go ahead, next one. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Hmm. God doesn't think like us. Amen. Neither are your ways my ways. Hmm. Doesn't have the same plans as us. Amen. He declares the Lord, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. You ever walk outside and look at the stars? And then look at the space between the stars, the blackness, and say, what, what is there? I can't understand what that is and how far it goes. And, and, and Isaiah here, he gives us this illustration of, yeah, when you look up there like that, and you say, I, I can't fully get that, that's like God and us. Like God is so far beyond us, he is incapable of being fully known. Are we driving this nail in deep here? Go to the next one. Can you find out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limit of the Almighty? It is higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than Sheol, the depths of the earth. What can you know? Its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. What's the next one? 1 Timothy 6.16, who alone has immortality? Who dwells in unapproachable light? Whom no one has ever seen or can see? To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. You can go to the next one. So what is, what is Scripture testifying to us, y'all? What Romans 11, those 30, 33 to 36 is testifying to us. We are incapable of fully knowing and comprehending God. That's it. Impossible. And, and the entire counsel of God's word shows us that. So it's, you can't have this expectation, and this is, this is where we get in trouble sometimes. It's, we think we can hold on to God, put him in our box again. But it would, do you have an expectation today to go grab the sun and just hold the sun? No. You can't do that. I mean, try to look at the sun. You can't have that expectation. It will burn your eyes. And that's something that was created. If you took the ocean, and let's say I, I, this is my bottle, and you could pick up the ocean, and I said, yeah, go ahead, pour it in here. I can hold it. This bottle cannot hold the entire water in the ocean. This is like our mind. And the ocean is like God. You're trying to fully comprehend him, and this is all you got. You cannot know the depths of of who God is. I said about grasping the sun. This was, that was from a 17th century Puritan named George Swinnick. He said it this way, though. It is more likely that you could grab the sun in your hand than to fully understand your God. Wow. So when y'all see the sun today here in a little bit, think to yourself, it would be easier for me to hold the sun in my hands than it would be to comprehend who God is. Huh. Now the scriptures have testified to that. It's, it's shown us that. So let's just give us some two, two beneficial points here. Okay, let's move on from the theology section and say, okay, how does this work in our lives? How does this affect our lives? And you might have this question... Our theme is to know God, yet everything that you've told us this morning is that we can't know God. <laughs> well, let me clarify. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, 
But the things, watch this, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Here's what this verse explains to us, what we're talking about. The secret things of God, there is, there is so much of God that we can never know because we're finite created beings and God is so much greater than us. But there are things... This bottle can hold some water, but it can't hold all the water. There are some truths and things about God that we can know and we should pursue to know. And that brings us great joy. And, and, and here's, here's what the truth is. How do we find joy? How do we find um, happiness and, and life-giving um, momentum? knowing that God is unknowable fully. Be reminded of what you can know. Because what you can know was revealed by God. God revealed this to us because he wants us to know this part of who he is. And we serve a really good God. So everything that he wants to reveal to us is for our good. That should bring joy to our hearts this morning to say, yeah, so I'm seeing in Scripture we can't fully know God, but we can know God. We just can't know Him fully. And what we can know about Him is beneficial to our lives. That's God's purpose. Now watch this, y'all. Listen here. If God created us with a capacity to know a portion of Him, then that means that God created us for a relationship with him. Because if he didn't want a relationship with us, he wouldn't have created us with the capacity to know him. He would have just said, start the earth, start the sun, start the stars, start the ocean, start the mountains, put some humans on there, put some animals on there, put some grass on there, put some beautiful trees on there and everything else. Push play, let it go, and I'm out of here. Y'all have a good time with y'all's world and y'all just live life however you want. But that's not what he did. He created us with the capacity to know him because he wants to live life with us on this earth. He wants to show us what his goodwill is, what his kingdom is, how, he, how his perfect goodness of his kingdom works here and now, and he wants us to be a part of that. What good joy that is for us. A father and a mother are always a father and a mother. Parents will always parent. Watch this. They never leave their child. Never. There's not a point in a child's life, and there shouldn't be a point in a child's life, where the parent just says, you hit 12 years old, I'm done with you, see ya. You hit 18 years old, or you got married, see ya. A parent always parents. It's their nature to do so. From the first day of school, and you walk with your child, father or mother, it doesn't matter. You walk with your child, you take your pictures and you say, go get them, son, or go get them, daughter. Have fun. And you pick them up after school. You take them to their dance in high school or whatever. Fathers, we walk our daughters down the aisle and we hand them off. We're still parenting. We hand them off to another man who's to respect her and honor her and serve her and love her and to show her the goodness of Jesus Christ. And then mothers are often right there when the grandchildren are coming, right? The mothers are ready. They're still parenting. A father comes and helps a child. It could be a mother too. It helps their, their 30 or 40 year old son figure out the plumbing problems in their house. They're still parenting Parents always parent because they're in a relationship with their child forever. And they're always going to be there in life. They don't do it. You know, they're not going to take over because there's a limits in how we do these things. But now take just pause for a minute and think about God. He said they, the scripture says oh, over and over. He is a good, good father. So he created us initially 
He created us in His own image as representatives of Him. And He says, listen, I want you to, to be married. I want you to enjoy life that way. I want you to have children. And I want you to teach them my ways. Because here's the truth. My way is the best way. It's the most fun you'll ever have. It's the most joy you'll ever receive. It's the most peace you'll ever um, have in life. My way. That's why I'm calling you to my way. Not because I'm arrogant, not because I'm a jerk, but because I have a great love for you and I know who I am. I am perfect and good and righteous and pure and have a good plan. And so I'm never going to let you go. I'm never going to just say, all right, good job, good luck. I'm always going to be with you. I'm going to walk beside you. And you're going to have the freedom to do these things, but I'm just going to come alongside you and live with you to show you how it's supposed to be. That's what God does. And so he creates us in that fashion and forms us in that fashion because he wants a relationship with us. John 3.16, God sent his only son. These are things that God is revealing to us to show us, I have a great love for you and I want to live life with you. Now, do you want to live life with me? It's a question. So there's the first benefit uh, of this truth of God is unsearchable. He's, you can't fully know him. You can't fully comprehend him. You can't fully understand him. But he created us with a capacity to know something about him because he loves us and wants us to walk life with him. Here's the second. There's so many more benefits, but let me just close us with this last benefit. The benefit of knowing this God who is unsearchable. And that benefit, I would say, is the gospel plan, everyone. The gospel plan. Romans 11, the, the verses that we were reading here, he says, Oh, the depths, is, depths of the riches. Who can search the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? All these questions, right? Basically, you can't, you can't figure it out. Nothing, no creature, no, nothing created could ever figure God out. But if you read the entire chapter of Romans 11, what Paul is saying is, you, you know the people of Israel that God chose in the Old Testament and walked with them through? God had a plan to use this people. And he says in the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12, he says, Abraham, if you'll come, I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. That's where Israel comes. I will make you a great nation. You will have many, many children. Now watch this. Go read it in Genesis 12. At the end of it, he says, and in you, all the nations will be blessed. So God had a plan a long time ago to bless, to bless the entire world, even though he had a chosen people, Israel. And so they hardened their hearts to when Jesus came, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the one who was to provide forgiveness for every one of us, the one who was to put us back on the right track of living in a relationship with him and knowing how to parent, knowing how to be a child, knowing how to be a senior saint. He puts us back into a relationship, but, but Israel rejected it. And so God says, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you jealous. And God had a plan. But he says, I'm going to reach out to all the people in the world. And they're going to be my people. And you're going to be very upset with that. But my plan, God's plan wasn't to upset them. He goes, my plan is to bring you back so that you'll see it and say, oh, I want to come back to the family of God. So in this, he inserts us. If you're not a Jew, that's you and I. He inserts you and I to be able to receive salvation, to be able to live life with God, to be God's people. Watch this. If we came up with this plan, I mean, we can't come up with this plan. That's what I'm getting at. You cannot come up with the gospel plan. No human, no, no greatest novelist, whoever the great novel writer, writers are, right? Some of us love books. Others of us love movies. There is no one who could script this. You read this, there is nobody who can think that way. And the point is to show you only a God who is unsearchable could do this. It's to point you back to God. Because if we, we, we uh, want the Savior to come, 
like the Israelite, Israel would do. They would say, bring in the king of kings. You know, open up the heavens and say, here I am. I'm Jesus. Make him the best looking person. Make him come to the most uh, beautiful city. Make him have the greatest job. Make him have this great title. Watch this. Jesus wasn't born in a castle. He was born in a manger. Jesus wasn't born as a model. He was born as some guy that you probably wouldn't look twice at. Jesus didn't have a CEO status. He had the job of a carpenter. Jesus went on to die on a cross, which was seen in that time, both Roman world and Jewish world, as the most despicable people. And God himself chose that plan and path. We cannot come up with this. This is God's plan for us to be forgiven, and God's plan for us to know him again because of our sin. Do we understand it all? God, why did you do that? No. Why? Because we're limited. Even in heaven, when this bottle becomes a little bit, maybe it's a 55-gallon uh, can or whatever, maybe we get to know more about God but we're still limited. We can never know the fullness of God because we are creatures and he is not created. He's eternal. So this good news of the gospel, we don't understand it. But the, the depths of it, we don't fully comprehend the, how it all works, the plan and why God did it this way, but we're not called to fully comprehend it. We're called to put our trust in it and to say, God, you had a great plan and I trust your plan. I don't understand it all. I don't fully comprehend how Jesus is fully human, fully God at the same time. But you tell me that's who he is and you tell me that's the only way I can be saved and you tell me that's the only way to be in a relationship with you. So Lord, I put my trust in you. I don't understand it fully, but I can't. And you don't call me to fully understand it. You call me to trust in your word. And the reason you call me to trust in your word is for the benefit of my life. Because you love me. You want a relationship with me. So my question to you is, although we cannot fully know God, we have the opportunity to know God partially. And that should be a great delight. It's a great delight to me. But is it a great delight to you?